Hello, you are welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so I've been wondering this concept called action in Photoshop, this concept called presets, this concept called lots. What do they really do? Obviously, I know that some people knows what they do, but uh, there are obviously some photographers that are not familiar with the, with those stems. They actually have not heard of them before. So today I took out the time. Let me explain what each of these does and how it's going to improve your workflow and how it's going to improve your workstation. This is going to take your photography and your retouching to the next level. You cannot afford to miss this video. Of course, we are giving out a free action pack, a free preset pack and a free lot pack at the end of the video. So make sure you watch through the end so you will see the link in, uh, you will see the password to unlock the archive files that you'll be receiving in the description below. So without wasting any of your time, let's get straight into it. Okay, so this is a picture that I've retouched using my action packs and all of that. So what is action? Let's get straight into work. Let me remove it from where you will see it so I can just show you exactly how to bring it right into your Photoshop in case you are not locating yours. All right, so let's say that your Photoshop is like this and you are asked to use action for your work so you go to windows you will see actions right here. it's going to come up like this now let me explain what an action is an action is simply an automated process that you use to edit your pictures so for example let's say that setting up a frequency separation uh setting up a frequency separation process takes like two minutes depending on the image then setting up a dot and bond process takes like two minutes or three minutes and every other process you do in your Photoshop. So instead of taking time to make out all these settings and come back to use them every time, only to start afresh every single time, you have to make an edit. So what do we do? We tell Photoshop, all right, please record this settings for me in time. Record it for me in time so that every other time I want to make use of such a process, you will just give me that process that I already saved so I can use it for my images. That is simply what an action is. It allows you to reuse some settings that you've already recorded in your system or in your laptop, you know, in your Photoshop while running your edits. That is simply what a, an action is, an automated procedure or process that helps you work faster. Now, let's dive straight into what a lot is. Now, let's say that after editing your pictures, running your frequency separation, you now want to color grade your images. So let's say I want to convert this picture to a cool effect. So I'll go to my layers, select my adjustment layer. So let me just pick something like photo filter. For example, I'm going to apply a cooling filter to it. So this gives me a magenta look. Then I'm going to go to my color balance, add a little magenta to it to make it look stronger with magenta, add a little warmness to it. So you see how amazing that skin tone is looking right now. Probably a little cyan. I don't, I don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to add a little red to make the whole thing look a bit glossy. Then let's go straight to maybe our gradient map, add a little filter to it. So let me go to my, probably my uh, uh, legacy support. If you can't see your legacy support, you might need to go to your window, just close everything about gradients down. You can actually remove it entirely. Go to your window, select gradients. So find your gradients here, look at it right here. So when it comes up, I want you to click on these three dots over here and go to legacy gradients. So when you press legacy gradients, the legacy ones, that's what I mean by legacy ones is that the one you, all the legacy gradients, all the gradient Photoshop have had before this uh, version are all stored inside legacy gradient. So go up and pick up your gradient map. So now you can see your gradients, your legacy gradients here. Inside legacy gradient, I'm going to try maybe something like photographic toning. Let me try something warm on the skin somewhere around here. Then I'm going to apply a soft light, take it down a little. So let me group the whole stuff. So you see the color grading we've been able to do. This is the color grading we've done. This is, this is the uh, original picture. This is the color grading we've done. Now, in a case that you love the color you are getting, you love it exactly the way it is, and you would want to repeat it on 
other pictures that you would edit. Probably you want to have it on this picture and equally have it on this picture. But the problem is when you've saved this one and removed it outside Photoshop to get the values, the number, how many you added, the opacity and the few, you may forget. And that brings us down to saving our lot. So what is lot? Lot is simply uh, your lookup table. So you can call it color lookup. That is, it allows you to look up colors from the things you've done previously, from the color gradients you've already had in your system. You look it up again and apply it on your picture. So I want to save this particular color grading, then remove it from this picture and apply it as a color lookup so that all these three pictures I just showed you on the screen are going to have the same uniform color just by setting it like that. It's going to be hard to get it exactly like that, especially when you've saved and removed all the layers you worked with. So how do we do that? We need to close down the original for original layer so it doesn't save this as well. Oh, uh, allow your group to be open, to be closed like that. Go to file, go to export. So when you go to export, let's locate our export case. So this is it right here. Go to save for, go to color lookup tables, rather color lookup tables. So this is going to allow us to export our color grading. So I'm going to name it, uh, okay, it's already carrying PGA JPEG. I think that name is perfect. Make sure you are, you are selecting medium, never go to maximum. It's going to cause a whole lot of system hanging for you. So just press OK. It's going to ask you where do you want to save the image, uh, the lookup table. I'm going to save it in the same folder where our uh, our sample images and all of that are. This is where I'm going to save it. I'm going to name this one sample, just sample. Sample so it will be easier for us to look at. Press save. So it's going to save the color gradient. So it has saved. I'm going to delete the color gradient right now. You will see the magic of color lookup. So you will notice that the image have gone back to its original state. Let's go to our adjustment layer, color lookup table. So you go, you will go to load color, load 3D lots. Click on load 3D lots. It's going to bring you right into this place. So I'm going to locate where my lookup is saved. Should be somewhere around here. So let's just find it. Okay, right here. Change your change your format to 3DL because we want to use 3DL. Change it to 3DL and come down. This is it right here. Sample. Press load. It will automatically load that color grading back on the image. And that is how you can probably use it on this one and use it on this one. Quick one. You can just drag it over here. You can just drag it over here. Drop it. And still drag it over here and drop. Now, your pictures are having uniform look. Look at this one. Look at this one. As if they are color graded at the same time. The reason is because we are look, we are using our color lookup table. That is simply what color lookup table is for you. So let me take you through the last concept called preset. Let me take you through the last concept called preset. So I'm going to be using this image particularly. So how do you apply presets on your image? The difference between color lookup and preset is that presets doesn't work generally inside your Photoshop like this. Although later versions of Photoshop have started applying some new presets have uh, set up putting the options of presets in your adjustments. But way before that, the only place you can find the use of presets for your images is in your camera roll. So go to filter, go to camera roll filter, wait for it to open up. All right, so it's still the same idea. We, we did some settings right here. Hold on, let's get back, let it back. So I want to off the highlight. I want to off the highlight. All right, so we are here in camera raw. What do we do right now? Let's say we did some settings. I already have some presets I'm going to apply, but let me just put you through what it is. If you did some settings, let's say you drop down the opacity, you increase the highlight, opened up the shadow, added a little coloring to it, just like that, to make it a bit more saturated and probably make it warmer. Now, this is the look you are going for. You don't want to, every time you want to start resetting this over and over again. So what do you do? You save it as a preset. How do you do that? You go to these three dots here, go to save settings. So when you save settings, it's going to ask you how many options that you apply do you want to save? In my case, I want to save everything. I want to save everything. So you go to save. The next thing is it will ask you where do you want to save the presets in? 
So I'm going to go and save it in the same folder we saved our color lookup. So it becomes easy for us to locate. Should be somewhere here. Let's look for it. Okay, so should be somewhere here. Open it up right here and press save. So once it says save, it's going to save it. So let me show you how to apply the preset on your image. Click on the three dots here and reset it to open. So we are back to the original way the picture was when we entered Photoshop. How do we, when we entered camera or rather, how do we apply the preset on it? Still go to the three dots and click on load settings. When you say load settings, locate the folder where your presets are saved. Mine is saved in my D somewhere in the course section. All right, so look at it right here. One more click. All right, so you will find it somewhere here. All right, look at it untitled because I didn't name it. So it's carrying the default name called untitled. So click on it and press open. It will automatically bring back all the settings that you've done. This is simply how to use presets in your camera roll. So I hope by now you've been able to understand the difference between lots and presets and what each of them does and how each of them can fall in your workflow and improve you. Thank you for watching this video.